ストーリーズ This morning at the National Assembly, the setting of the agenda for the end of the year activities of the parliamentarians. In our regional news in Burkina Faso, 35 civilians, including 31 women, are killed in jihadist attack. Welcome to our newsroom. Beginning with our major story of this evening, the Conference of Presidents of the National Assembly took place focusing on setting the agenda for the end of the year activities of the parliamentarians. More details with Dini Musa. The leadership of the Speaker of the National Assembly, Muhammad Ali Hummad, and in accordance with Article 22, 1 and 2 of the Standing Orders of the Parliamentary Institution, the Conference of Speakers met this Wednesday, December 25, 2019, to send the agenda of activities of the national representation for this end of the year and the first fortnight of January 2020. At this conference, the government was represented by the Prime Minister Abdul Ghadir Kamil Muhammad and the Minister of Defense in charge of relations with Parliament, Hassan Omar Muhammad Burhan. The meeting was also attended by the two Vice Presidents, the Secretary Treasurer, the Chairman of Parliamentary Groups, the Chairman of Standing Committees, and the General Rapporteur of the Budget. On the sustenance of the deliberations, two legislative texts were transmitted. By the governments to the component communities. As well as uh, referring to our uh, next subject, uh, headed by the Vice President Honorary Hamad uh, Mohammed Hamad, the Committee on General Economy, Finance and Planning, and many of the non-Bermanian deputies began this Wednesday, December 25, the study of the initial draft budget bill of the state for the financial year 2020. The meeting took place with the presence and participation of the Minister of Budget, Abdul Karim Aden Sher, accompanied by key officials of his department. This permanent commission in charge of、uh, public accounts and resources devoted its four day、uh, for the, to the examination of state revenue, reviewing the general characteristic of fiscal and parafiscal inputs. It should be noted that this budgetary control will continue tomorrow, 26 December, on the public charges and expenditure. Side before the ruling on the transmission to the plenary session of the entire aforementioned corpus, the draft initial finance act 2020. An awareness day on the new directives of the accounting offices was held、uh, this morning at the People's Palace with two、uh, watchwords: rigor and acidity. Under the aegis of the Ministry of Budget, this awareness day, which is part of the reinforcement of good financial governance of public establishments, in other words, an approach that is in line with the government's dynamic on modernization of public accounting. Uh, these new directives, initiated by the Budget Minister, Mr. Abdul Karim Aden Sher, have the main objective it, to increase the performance of public management、uh, for a better service, but also in order to uh, make uh, them aware of their responsibilities, their attributions, and their role, namely the improvement of the efficiency of public action for the benefit of all and the establishment of a true transparency in public management. All this with a view to strengthening the efficiency of the public expenditure. And improving budgetary transparency. In addition to the accountants of public institutions, the meeting was attended by the Minister of Justice, Labour and Communication, Transport, Energy, and Senior Public Administration officials. Mr. Mohammed Musa, in his speech, highlighted、uh, the importance of、uh, taking up the challenges、uh, facing the holder and leading to a favourable climate of the expected directorates. As Mr. Ab Ahmed Abdurrahman Ige, the Inspector General of Finance, recalled that the duty of every accountant has an essential role in the service of, for the general interest. Further, on his speech, stressed that the financial,、uh, fiscal, and social security provided by the latter is the reason for the existence of our regulations. As for、uh, Mr. Abdul Karim Aden Sher, the Minister of Budget says the tone on his speech.、Uh, Uh, this awareness raising day is of particular importance as it is tool for good governance in public finances, according to him. The Minister of Budget stressed that this important meeting is aimed at strengthening the、uh, financial management of the public office and is an important part of the plan of action of the President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismail Mergeli. He has indicated that lack of compliance with the legal system can lead to serious consequences and persecution if the law does not exist in public accounts. When it comes to marketing and sales, the government should think it should not be taken into account as the fundamental rules of free trade and trade are not just a private mistake. 
the separation of administrative and financial powers is not considered, he said. Accountability to the accountant is important and there will be no tolerance for accountants who are not legally employed in public areas and must be aware that he or she is a person taxed with protecting public property. An important one is that no accountability, he said, will be tolerated without reason. We have made our first plan to have a regular auditor and require the public accounting director to submit regular reports evaluating the work and transparency of the auditor, said the minister. And career audits of the public accounts are set out in a law that is a system that encourages to be honest uh, with the work you have been asked, he said, to do in order to demonstrate effective work ethics. The public accounts director for this work is accompanied by general financial oversight of agencies that monitor the work undertaken for next month. We will be followed by an audit of the accounting process, followed by training of experts to assist us in implementing and supporting public accounting auditors, he said, as well as for training good financial management, has added the Minister of Budget. The presentation of financial accounts is an important manifestation of a transparent and accountable account that is advised by the accountant who fails to meet the law. By 2020, we intend to, be, to begin implementing a broader program, has continued the Minister of Budget. Ultimately, the legal system of the functions of a public auditor is one that needs to be reformed. If the nomination system is to take the oath of office and coordinate its work, I think we will take a positive step, he said. At the end of his speech, the minister recalled the importance of the work of the nation and the role that everyone has taken in meeting this need. After several years of good and loyal service at the head of the IOM in Djibouti, Mr. Abdullahi Barri, Mr. Abdullahi Barri has been called to other functions, therefore a farewell party was organized in his honor at Onars to salute and honor the long-term work done during his presence at the head of the UNCCR office in Djibouti and in close collaboration with the National Office of Assistance to Refugees and Disaster Victims, Onars with the Djiboutian government and all partners. The Minister of the Interior honored with his presence to immortalize the sovereign moment of departure of the outgoing UNCCR representative in Djibouti. Also noted the presence of the Secretary General of the Ministry of Interior, Mr. Siraj Ahmad Abdul Qadir, and the Secretary General of the Ministry of Education, Mr. Mohammed Abdullah Mahyub, and all the technical staff of the honors who all wished good and to uh, Mr. Abdullah Barri, who was a simple and very known in the humanitarian field. The gifts of souvenirs were offered by the officials started by the Minister of Interior, Women Ahmed Sheikh, followed by the two Secretaries General. The Minister of the Interior, Mr. Mumin Ahmed Sheikh, has for this occasion both congratulated and thanked the outgoing representative, Mr. Barri, and wished him a very good start. The National Association of the Local Authorities of Djibouti organized this Wednesday, Wednesday uh, December 25, 2019, at the People's Palace, its second ordinary general assembly, which brought together the statutory members of the association, which are 41 members. The NCLD is an umbrella association of local authorities in Djibouti that brings together the five regions of the interior and the city of Djibouti. It was created on 27 February 2016 by the elected officials of the previous term and operationalized on 24 October 2018. Two years later, by the elected officials of the present term, the mayor of the city and president of the NCLD, Mrs. Fatouma Awala Osman, and the head of the European Union, cooperation, Mr. Bernard Francois, co-chaired the opening ceremony in her opening remarks, the president of the NCLD and mayor of the city of Djibouti, welcomed the statutory members of whose presence and support is punctual at each general assembly. For its part, the head of the cooperation of the European Union delegation, Mr. Bernard Francois, said he was very pleased to take part in the launch of this second general assembly. He also expressed his satisfaction to see that the support program for local authorities financed by the European Union has made it possible to operationalize the ANCLD. 
In her speech, the mayor recalled the agenda of the second general assembly, which deals with three points, the approval of 2019 financial report of the NCLD, the approval of 2019 activity report of the NCLD, and consideration of an action plan for the year 2020. As part of the preparation for the end of the year celebrations, the General Director of the National Police under the leadership of the Director General of, of the Police, uh, Colonel Abdullah Abdi Farah, has uh, set up uh, an important security system throughout the capital in its outskirts. Uh, this security mechanism is indeed intended to ensure the safety of people and property, but also to enable the many nationals of different foreign communities living in our country to spend these holidays in good conditions. All units of the National Police were mobilized last night in the capital. Roadblocks were set up on the main traffic roads. Entire, entire controls were put in place. Pedestrian patrols in police and brigades were uh, deployed around the city's major hotels, which are very popular with foreign communities living in our country. Rehabilitation work on the water supply system in several districts was undertaken by the Djibouti National Office of Water and Sanitation, ONEAT. More details with Dini Musa. The Djibouti National Office of Water and Sanitation has carried out rehabilitation work on the water supply system in several districts, namely Rue Avenue 26 and Avenue 13, after having closed the water supply system in these districts following heavy rainfalls. The missions of the sanitation department are to carry out general and specific studies of urban infrastructure with rainwater and wastewater drainage networks. Sanitation service is mobilized to keep the city clean. The aim of this operation is to clean up the water supplies in these neighborhoods in order to reach all the neighborhoods as part of the Djibouti Clean City Program. Officials stressed the improvement of the communication made on environmental initiatives and awareness in the neighborhoods and networks and to maintain the action of cleanliness of the city of Djibouti. In a statement made on this occasion, the officials of the ONED said that the purpose of these sanitation works is to stop stingy water in certain sectors of the city of Djibouti. On their part, the agents of the ADR continue to repair the roads, which will be done only after the agents of the sanitation is to carry out the necessary work of cleaning in these various districts of the capital and this peripheral. Uh, after the torrential rains, the missions of services of the sanitation being to carry out general and particular studies of the urban infrastructure. Uh, with the rainwater uh, drainage networks, uh, this operation of rehabilitation is intended to reach the whole of Djibouti City and Balbala. Indeed, the realization of this work uh, of asphalting tarmacs intended to stop the stagnation of wastewater in certain sectors in order to make practical uh, the traffic lanes for buses and others. During the day of Monday, December 23, a delegation led by Mr. Ali Mohammed Kabil, technical advisor of the Minister of Labor in charge of the reform of the administration composed of a team of executives of this department in charge of an evaluation of benefits provided by the branches and decentralized services of the state moved to ARTA. Uh, this tour is part of the activities to strengthen and evaluate the policy of decentralization of state services in the territorial communities. This fourth stage of this mission will continue until 8 January 2020 on the, in the other regions of the interior. The Ministry of Health, uh, in collaboration with the Djibouti Lions Club, is organizing a campaign for free cataract surgery in the interior regions in the Ali Sabih region. Activities began on 24th December of this month and will continue until 26th December 2019. A team consisting of an ophthalmologist and, a, and technicians traveled to the Ali Sabih region for this cataract caravan campaign. The objective of this cataract campaign are to detect and operate an Cataract patients, a total of uh, 340 patients were consulted during the three days of uh, the free cataract surgery caravan. 53 cataract patients were uh, selected by the cataract uh, surgery. To this end, a delegation led by the prefect of the region, Musa Adan Mingani, uh, visited this morning the regional hospital, Dr. Ahmed Absi Warsama, where cataract surgery and free ophthalmology a consultation are carried out. As part of the uh, development of the national disability policy, the national National Agency for Disabled Persons has begun prospective workshop in the northern regions for diagnosis and planning of uh, the national strategy and specifically in Tajora on this day.
on this sun on Sunday, uh, December 15, the, the, the uh, president of the Regional Council of Tijera and the Deputy Secretary General welcomed the officials to compose of the acting Director General of the ANPH, the advisor to the Minister of Social Affairs and Solidarity, the responsible of developing the national strategy, but also a lawyer of the ANPH. More specifically, it is about, among other things, empowering, promoting the participation and role of people with special needs in the elaboration and planning of the future national strategy that the ANPH proposes. Of victory, we regret to announce the death of the late Kamil Barogoyta Kamil on Monday in Djibouti following a brief illness. The late Kamil Barogoyta Kamil, notable of the Tajora region, was a personality much appreciated by all communities for his wisdom and courage. He leaves behind him a large family with 13 children. The disappearance of the late Kamil Barogoyta is a great loss in the whole region of Tajora, and more particularly in Rwanda and Didi Tulu. May, be, may, the God, may the good Lord welcome him to his internal paradise. In world news, 35 civilians, including 34 uh, women, killed in jihadist attack in Burkina Faso. Details in this video. Burkina Faso is in deep sorrow. 35 civilians, including 31 women, were killed Tuesday in a jihadist attack in Arbidina, in the north of the country. Several deaths also are in the ranks of the Burkinabi army. During the attack, which lasted several hours, 80 terrorists were also naturalized. It was one of the most deadliest attacks in the history of Burkina Faso. 48 hours of national grief has been declared. On Tuesday morning, a significant number of terrorists attacked the military detachment and the civilian population of Arbidina in Sum province, according to the army staff. Burkina Faso has been prey to recurrent jihadist attacks since 2015, like its neighbors Mali and Niger. Burkinabi President Roche Kabure himself, who has often been blamed for his lack of clout against jihadist groups, announced on Twitter the grim results of this barbaric attack. In India, movement to challenge citizenship law continues. Explanations with Dini Musa. Thousands of people took on the streets of New Delhi on Tuesday to demand the removal of India's controversial new citizenship law. Demonstrators marched to Jantar Mantar, an area close to parliament, behind a large banner that we, the people of India, enchanted slogans against Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the police force. The protesters said the text is the latest effort by Mr. Modi's government to marginalize India's 200 million Muslims. Modi defended the law which allows Hindus, Christians and other religious minorities who are in India illegally to become citizens if they can prove that they have been persecuted because of their religion in Muslim majority countries, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. However, the legalization clause does not apply to Muslims, even though the Indian state is officially neutral with regard to religion. And that's all for this news. Thank you for joining us on the radio television of Djibouti. Have a good night.